I was in a perfect position to make this video because I'm gonna be honest with you guys. With what's going on in Europe and the politics and trading oil, I was a bit out of the loop with what is going on in the crypto world, other than of course Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, and a few others. So I didn't even know this project existed. So I was super ready, super pumped to get in and research what exactly went on here. And guys, please watch this till the end and let me know down in the comments if I have missed something. This story is developing so fast and I'm only human, I can't get up to speed with everything, right? So help me out there. So let's take it from the beginning. Basically, there are different types of cryptocurrencies. And I apologize to all the internet kids who already know this, but this video is gonna be like a PSA for the older generation. So you can show this to your parents, and when they ask you where all that money went, they will understand. So there's Ethereum type tokens, which are actual blockchains, things like AVAX, Polkadot, Solana. These are sort of respected in the industry because they actually serve a purpose. Then there are meme tokens for making giggles, rug pulls, making millionaires overnight, usually just a few of them, while the rest get burned or jump into late. And then there's stable coins. And they're not called stable because you can go ahead and buy a stable of horses with them. They're called stable because the chart is supposed to look something like this. So stable coins are not really something you buy or short for profit. They're something that you can convert your other cryptos or your fiat money into so that you don't need to take your profits or you don't need to take your money off an exchange. So a stablecoin is essentially a cryptocurrency that is supposed to act like a dollar. And let's say Bitcoin is making wild swings like it does now, and you perhaps want to do some analysis, prepare better. So what happens is you swap your Bitcoin into a stablecoin to avoid any potential losses because the idea is that stablecoins don't experience any volatility. You put money into stablecoins because they're a safety net, supposedly. And this is one of the reasons why this story is such a mess. Because people who are kind of into volatile assets thought that this stablecoin was one of their safe havens. Sort of like an island where you can park your cash and weather the storm. But here is a massively simplified version of why that didn't work with UST. Unlike other stablecoins like USDT or USDC, which are backed by real world reserves, you know, locked up somewhere, UST's peg does not rely on the existence of reserves to support its peg to the US dollar. And the way it maintained its peg was through its sister token, Luna. And basically the whole idea behind this is that this is an algorithmic stablecoin, not being backed by real currency. And supposedly it's more decentralized and better for the whole network compared to a non-algorithmic stablecoin like Tether. So to issue one UST valued at $1, $1 worth of Luna token would have to be burned. Now the way UST attracted so much money was through its anchor protocol, which basically means a guaranteed 20% profit just for locking up your stable coins. And the more people that realize that you can basically get a guaranteed profit with UST, the more its demand grew, leading a huge increase for Luna as well. And remember, $1 worth of Luna was burned every time $1 worth of UST was minted, leading to a smaller total supply of Luna. And we all know what happens when the supply shrinks. Less supply, higher demand, the price goes up. Sounds good on paper, right? So where did this all go wrong? Obviously at a certain point with enough UST locked up, the 20% yield became actually unsustainable. And so at the beginning of May, the Anchor Protocol implemented a semi-dynamic earn rate. And this earn rate would basically fluctuate 1.5% up or 1.5% down based on the yield reserve. And so for the month of May, the yield reserve was lower and the earn rate dropped from 19.5% to 18%. Long story short, instead of withdrawing their money because, you know, lesser profits, people started shelling even more money, putting even more money in the Anchor Protocol. This was unexpected. But when the Fed announced an interest rate hike, Right around the same time, people got scared and folks started to take money out of the Anchor protocol and on May 7th, when the whole crypto market crashed, Anchor started to really bleed money. And obviously, during a crypto crash, the sister token Luna also lost much of its value. So right around 3 billion UST were taken out of the Anchor protocol and people started to get kind of panicky and started to sell them for other stable coins. This heavy selling pressure basically caused a certain unknown whale to withdraw $100 million worth of UST, causing the peg to slip to 98 cents. And over the course of the weekend, a bunch of these huge million billion dollar withdrawals were made. At the same time, Luna's price fell by about 25%. And you know, Luna is kind of meant to act as a stabilizing mechanism for UST. So the peg was now at 98 and Luna was supposed to stabilize it. 
or in fact traders were. Because here's how it works. Let's say UST is trading at 98 cents. Traders can buy it and always exchange it for $1 worth of Luna. That's a guaranteed two cent profit. So it was actually not an algorithm, but actually traders who kept USTs pegged to the dollar. When the price was a bit lower than $1, they sold Luna for UST. And when the price of UST was a little bit above $1, they bought Luna. Basically you trade $1 worth of UST for $1 worth of Luna and do this vice versa. And basically that is how an algorithmical stablecoin keeps its peg to the dollar. And over the weekend, when UST was below its peg, it was bought, redeemed for Luna, and then because it was a crypto sell-off, Luna was then sold on the open market and crashed lower. And the selling pressure was so high that Luna basically experienced a free fall, which was really strengthened by the overall risk-off sentiment in the market. Jeez, I hope I'm making sense with all this. Now, when Luna absolutely crashed, that's where the real problem started for UST because it depegged to 60 cents, which of course caused an even greater selling pressure for Luna. And this is what is known as an algorithmical death spiral. Basically insane amounts of selling pressure just to keep the peg, which in turn creates more selling pressure, which could be one of the reasons why the founder of Luna and UST said this just a couple of days before this happened. These companies you think are entering the space just because it's hot and there's a lot of funding versus the ones that will still be here, you know, like two to five years later. Oh, 95% <laughs> are going to die. Yeah. 95% are going to die. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's also entertainment to watching companies die too. There's entertainment. Oh man, that's, that's, that's what we want. That aged well. Like pretty much all of the crypto market, UST is largely dependent on Traders continued interest and belief that this project will work. A $40 billion token has fallen to absolute zero. It's worthless. Now here is a very interesting tweet by Charles Hoskinson. He's the brains behind Cardano. And this thing's been circulating around in the crypto space and really raising some tough questions. So this tweet is saying that Citadel, which is unanimously hated by retail traders, and BlackRock, which is a shady, greedy billion trillion dollar company that owns half the world, is behind this attack. And this tweet is basically saying that the Anchor Protocol with its 20% API was essentially a huge Ponzi scheme because it's the only way they could have sustained it and paid off the first investors. And as always, it's the average Joe, the retail trader that gets hurt in these global big boy power games. Around 50 billion of people's hard earned money was liquidated people's hopes, people's dreams. This is a coffee. This is what liquidation looks like. Imagine that's somebody's money and it's gone forever. You can't get it back. Well, technically, let's not go there. This is a real defining moment in the crypto industry. And mark my words, just mark them, take them and mark them. This is gonna be a Netflix movie in the upcoming years. I said it first. A top 10 crypto project suddenly becomes worthless due to some built-in fundamental flaws and a couple of outside events triggering, putting pressure on those flaws. And the ones that really benefited from this are the super risk tolerant short sellers who basically shorted Luna from around $86 to right about 0 0.00003 nothing, nothing fairy dust doesn't exist and as you can see the world is not fair people who didn't want to risk who wanted to trust the stable coin lost everything those who wanted to take the risk basically gamble with huge leverage small amounts of money and huge leverage they became rich overnight by spotting this and shorting luna and do kwan also possibly got rich from this because you know he's the smarty pants owner of terran luna the one who created it the one who never listened to any criticism of the fundamental flaws that his system has. And now he's disappeared altogether, well, at least from Twitter. And really the bigger message here is that the one thing that is supposed to be stable and certain and trustworthy in the crypto space, a stable coin, absolutely tanked. And as of now, the market is already super tense. It is tense. I mean, people are losing money left, right and center. They don't know what to do. They don't know who to trust. The inflation is skyrocketing. Lots of uncertainty in the world. And this just creates further instability, further uncertainty, and less trust in crypto markets. I, for one, think the bearish pressure is here to stay. And possibly now with this situation, this giant 
scan, you could say. I think there's possibly even some regulators chiming in, muddying the waters all over again. So we'll see where this goes. As I said, I've been out for a good minute, but I'm back, I'm ready to sharpen up, ready to investigate the crypto space, and of course, share all my findings with you. So subscribe, like, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.